Here's our friend Jalen Thompson from the Star in Kansas City. Covers the Royals. Uh, just covered that two-game sweep in the wild card series against Baltimore. Headed now to New York where the Royals begin that best-of-five series on Saturday against the Yankees. Jalen, hello. Welcome. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good to talk to you again. We're, do- we're doing well. We appreciate you doing this. We know you're busy. Uh, so I guess the first thing I'll ask you is uh, everybody's kind of shocked about uh, the Tigers, the Royals. Uh, when did you first think to yourself, you know, this Kansas City team might be for real? Honestly, I think when they got through April and they got through May and you kind of looked at June and you're like, you know what, this team can really pitch. If they can keep the hitting going, then there's a chance that they could be in contention. I know that's what everyone was was really looking and banking on is they, they always have a slow start. It's always a slow April. They're always out of it. And, you know, going through last year when they lost the 105th game, when I came on to the beat, I believe they were like only had nine wins and had already had 20 losses. So I kind of got the back end of just how tough it was for them to really have a, a fast start. But now, seeing where they are now, I would say around the 1st of June. Yeah, so you talked about them being able to keep their pitching going, and if they could keep their hitting going, uh, big things can happen. And that happened for uh, a big chunk of the season, but they have not hit much over the final couple weeks of the the regular season, not a ton in the first two games. And, of course, you don't read too much into two games, but when it's part of a bigger picture. And you know Bobby Witt's a threat. Can anyone else in this lineup turn themselves into a threat against the Yankees? And, And if not, can they win games with that staff still? Yeah, I think that they can definitely win games with the staff because you're talking about Michael Walker is going on Saturday. But then you have Cole Reagans and you have potentially Seth Lugo lined up to go as well later in the series. So you could potentially steal a game in New York and then try to win it on your home field at the K Coffin Stadium. But as far as the offense goes, I think the Rose have to – manufactured the run. You know, Vinny Pasquatino came back and he had an RBI single. They missed that. When he was out, they were one of the worst teams with runs in scoring position. They just couldn't scratch across a run. So having Vinny be back in the middle of Bobby and Salvador Perez, that's a huge thing for this offense. And I, you're right. I think it's going to have to be an unlikely hero, an unsung hero that has to step up. Depending on who that could be, could that be Michael Massey? He had two hits against the, or- the Orioles, really big, crucial hits. Um, in those first two games, we'll have to see who it may be. Could it be a Hunter Renfro? Could it be a, even a Tommy Pham? But it's just going to have to be someone other than the big three for sure. But then they pinch hit for Michael Massey late in the game. Anyway, we'll get to that later. Go ahead, dude. Well, it, I, but don't you think that's going to be the problem? I mean, it, if you're only going to score two or three runs, you're not going to beat the Yankees, even with that pitching staff. The, mm-hmm. They, there's too much firepower there. So what's the coaching staff saying? Is is it that they're worried about the Yankees' offense, which you would have to be with guys like Judge and Soto in that lineup? Because that's going to be put a lot of pressure on not Name only, another one in that lineup. That's my – you you can you can survive that lineup. For Dugo, I mean, do, you, do we got to go through the whole exactly. lineup? Well, All right, well, Bob at, disagrees, I, I but I'm curious like, on what you think. I look at it like this. The Yankees – they have tremendous power. They do. You know what Aaron Judge is going to do. You know what Juan Soto is going to do. Giancarlo Stanton is also a threat with his power. Anthony Rizzo. Well, you guys mentioned Verdugo and whatnot. But you also have to look at the Yankees have a lot of swing and miss, too. So if the Royals can pitch the way they pitched the first two games against the Orioles, and Michael Walker, who, if you look at his numbers since the sec- in the second half of the season after the All-Star break, he's been out. One of the best pitchers in the league. I believe he has like a 2-7 a ERA, I believe, something around there. The Royals, they don't have to go in feeling pressure or concerned or anything. All that's on the Yankees. The Yankees are the top seed. They're at home. The Yankees are supposed to win this series. That's, that's what everyone is predicting and saying, right? The Royals are playing with house money. And when you play with house money, that makes you very, very dangerous. And I think the Royals can potentially upset them in game one if they're not careful. 
Couldn't agree more. I I know the Yankees are the the number one seed. I know they have superstars in that lineup, but I do think uh, you can maneuver that lineup, especially with the pitching staff as good as the Royals have been. Um, so let's let's talk about uh, the future because the Royals have every move they've made has been uh, incredible, including getting Lucas Erceg to close games. I mean, how in the world do you get a guy like that at the trade deadline? for as little as they had to give up. It's just uh, amazing. They have the Midas touch. What needs to happen in this offseason to make sure that this just this isn't just a one-year uh, wonder, a one-year blip? How do they build something sustainable? I think the good thing that you've seen about this run is the fact that you have relievers that are emerging. You mentioned Lucas Erceg. He's going to be there to close game. Angel Zerpa who had one of the best uh, performances in game two. He comes in, bases loaded, one out. He gets a strikeout, and he gets a ground out, and he comes back out the next inning and gets another one plus out. I think he'll be someone that you can rely on in that bullpen. And look at what Chris Gubich has done, Sam Long has done, John Schreiber. All of those guys are still going to be under contract pretty much. So your bullpen is kind of shaping itself into be really strong and really – Great. I can't, can't forget about Dale Lynch, the four foot two in that bullpen. But to answer your question, I would say the Royals, I believe, need to add more offensive firepower. Maybe another outfielder that can give you consistency. You thought you had that with Hunter Renfro this season, and he didn't really put up, put up the year that we we're accustomed to seeing Hunter Renfro put up. You need someone to probably take one of those outfield spots, and you need more out of MJ Melendez and Michael Garcia. Those are two players at two spots where if they're going to be on this team long term, they have to be more productive. Yeah, you mentioned the bullpen, and that's kind of where I was going. They were talking yesterday on the ESPN broadcast about how they've really reshaped the bullpen ever since kind of Ursay got there, and they've moved guys around and, and moved guys to the bullpen and uh, let guys kind of uh, settle in. I mean, another thing that's just been a move that worked perfectly, how much – credit does J.J. Piccolo get around the league for what he's done this year? He's got to be executive of the year, doesn't he? Yeah, I would be totally shocked if he does not win executive of the year. Just everything that he's done, he's pressed the right button at the right time. Even going back to getting Yuli Gurriel, Robbie Grossman, and Tommy Sam, those three guys have come in, and while they may not have made a huge dividend in the in the stat sheet or in the win column, they just know how to play baseball and they play well and they know they have been here they've, they've been through these wars they've been through these moments a lot of fans have to realize that it's not just what you see on the field it's off the field as well um quick story uh will smith he's now he wasn't on the wild card uh postseason roster but that his impact the entire year has been phenomenal michael massey he brought up a good story in the in the uh press conferences yesterday he said you know Talking to Will Smith after the Royals lost seven straight, he's like, the good thing is we won't be able to lose tomorrow. And it was just like eye-opening in a perspective where it's like a lot of guys could have got down themselves, and he's making a joke about losing seven straight. But, hey, it, it's, he's saying it's like it's baseball. Everything's going to be okay. We'll bounce back. I think that kind of mentality, that kind of leadership has permeated the entire clubhouse, and that's really what's helped with the Royals have that resiliency that they have now. Well, we've kind of broken that game or the series down a little bit, but what would your prediction be in this series? And with that, what's your prediction in the other series, too, with Detroit and Cleveland? With the Royals, I think they have a really good chance to to, to beat the Yankees and be competitive. I think that if they're going to be successful, they have to win a game in New York and then take both games at home. Uh, everybody says the K is a different experience, and I'm looking forward to see that. I think the Royals have the ability to do that, but like you said, they have to score runs. If they don't score against the Yankees, then the Yankees will probably win that series. Flipping over to the Tigers and the Guardians, it's so hard to predict an American League Central Series. But Tigers have been so hot, and I just think that they might be just another team of destiny. And you might see them potentially move forward to the ALCS because you just don't play that hot and continue to move forward. Look at the Arizona Diamondbacks last year. They were a similar team that did the same thing. So... I think my money will be on the Tigers against the Guardians. Well, as you were saying all that, my son, uh, Jeff, who is a co-host and a Guardians fan, 
was making some obscene gestures into the microphone. <laughs> I choked okay. on my uh, own spit, I think, for a second. I there. apologize for that behavior. <laughs> hey, I mean, <laughs> Cleveland has a good team, but do they have enough starting pitching to counteract what the Tigers are doing right now? They're, they're just really hot. Well, it's going to be fun. I hope I'm going to read some reminiscing of uh, the Yankees and Royals from the 70s from some of the members of the star staff. I'm sure I will. Uh, they had yeah. some knockdown drag outs back in that time, and this might be another one. Jalen, thank yes. you very much for uh, fitting us in today. For sure. Thank you, guys. I always got time for y'all. Y'all have been so great for me and so welcoming, and I can't wait to talk to you guys again.